In this video, I'd like to talk to you about de Casselier Bezier curves. You may have already seen many ways of describing a curve in space. For example, you could have seen parametric form of a curve, you could have seen polar form, or a curve expressed in the uh, perhaps most familiar Cartesian coordinate system, something involving x's and y's and squares and multiples of these things. Now I'd like to tell you about a more recent discovery, which was a way to specify curves in terms of their control points. So now I'm going to talk about a way of describing a nice curve, going first from A to B, then B to C, and then combining them to get a very nice curve from A down to C. The first part of this question is, how shall we best get from A to B? And of course the answer is, we go straight there. But I'm going to write it in a very particular way. So to get from A to B, I'm going to express it in terms of the points A and B. I'll call this line P of T. Okay, so first of all I've just defined some symbols. I'm going to let the vector A be the vector from the origin to this point. A B, B, little b, be that vector there, and C, the vector to there. And that enables me to write this line here from A to B as P of T. You can think of these parts here, these bits out in front of the A and the B, as weights. So when T is 0, all the weight is at A and the point is at A. When T is 1, all the weight is at B and the point is at B. And when T is somewhere between 1 and or 0 and 1, then the line is somewhere proportionally between A and B. For example, when T is half, half then we're halfway between A and B. All right. I can similarly define the line from B to C. So this gives me a new line. Initially, all the weight is at B when, time, when t is equal to 0, and when t is equal to 1, all the weight is at C. You can also think about this as time. And time is only going to go from 0 to 1, and it moves, time moves uniformly as we expect it to, and as time goes uniformly from 0 to 1, then the point goes uniformly from, first of all, here we're describing a point from A to B, and here we're describing a point going uniformly from B to C using this equation. Good. These are the first two parts of our equation, and so far we've just described a point going, or well, the motion of a point going along this line from A to B and B to C. Now we're going to combine them. So at a particular time t, here's my p of t. t. Here's my q of t for a particular time t, and I can also describe a point which is moving along this line, or I can also describe this line in the same way. R of t can be... So as time goes from 0 to 1, my point p of t is moving along here, my point q of t is moving along here, and my point r of t is moving along this line from p of t to q of t. And as it does so, well, first of all, all when time is, let's just think about this, when time is zero, then all my weight is at p of t, and p of t is down here. When t is one, all my weight is at q of t, and q of t is here. And as t goes from zero to one, we get this lovely kind of parabolic curve like that. So let's express this in terms of the points a, b, and c. And now I've expressed R of t in terms of these a's, b's, and c's, the, ve the coordinate vectors for the what I'm calling the control points a, b, and c. And as time goes from 0 to 1, initially all the weight is here at a, and the curve is at a. When t is a half, you can wait 
thinking about it as weighting this triangle ABC. And when T is equal to a half, you put a quarter of the weight here, a quarter of the weight here, and a, a half of the weight here. And then the center of mass of this triangle is where the point R of T is. And when T is equal to 1, then you put zero weight here, zero weight here, and one weight here, and of course the center of mass of the triangle is just in C. And as T goes from 0 to 1, this point R of T traces through the centers of mass of this triangle and gives you this lovely curve. So this is a nice, compact, and useful way to describe curves through points A, B, and C. The points A and C tell you where the curve must go through. So the curve starts at A, ends at C. The point B gives you a, an initial and final trajectory of the point. So initially it starts at the point A and its trajectory is in the line AB. Finally, when T is equal to 1, the point is at C, but its trajectory is in line BC. So this is a very convenient way of describing curves. You can talk about it, their endpoints, you can talk about their initial and final trajectories, you can talk about the whole curve just by specifying three points.